Okay, so a warm welcome to our today's uh, Q&A session. My name is Dr. Sabine Marinczek. I'm a clinical psychologist and medical scientist. And together with my colleague Eva, I will be here for you today. Eva, do you want to introduce yourself, please? <laughs> Thank you. So hi, nice to meet you. My name is Eva. I'm one of NoTube's therapists. I'm a pediatric physiotherapist, therapist, therapist for sensory integration and Castillo Morales therapist. Um, working with this concept since more than 30 years, first on the children's clinic where it has been developed by our medical doctors and now since years by NoTube. Yeah. So today we are going to going through the, all the questions you have sent us. We got so many questions that we won't be able to answer every single one of them. But uh, please feel free to book a free evaluation with Eva in order to discuss your situation in person. Um, my colleague um, Carolina will put in the link for you in the chat section. And if you want to uh, ask any questions during the webinar, please use the Q&A section below. Yeah, so I'm going to start with the first questions. Um, what are some strategies caretakers can use to successfully extend what they learned practiced via telehealth when they are feeding alone? Well, I think when you used one of our um, telemedical programs, um, we um, support you as long and, and very exactly how you should do it, how you should have the feeding positions, whatever, how, how to, to use the spoon, what kind of bottle spoons, whatever you can use um, so that you um, feel safe and secure when you're doing it on your own. Yeah. Um, then there was another question. Um, how does weaning from group work online? Yeah, so this is a good question um, because we do online group weaning since 2009. So since a very long time, it's called net coaching. And during the net coaching, um, we guide you as a family um, every day. Each ticket is um, supported by a pediatrician, a clinical psychologist, and a feeding therapist. And they work with you extensively on uh, everything around the weaning. So you have to complete an intake protocol every day, put in the weight. You have to send us videos of feeding situations, and then you get our feedback. Um, you get uh, tube feeding reduction plans from us. So you know how much to feed your child via tube. And... We, uh, we guide you through the weaning until your child is 35 days without any tube feeds, no matter how long it takes to get there uh, with a maximum of six months. Um, yeah, this weaning method works very well. Um, it is great for children who have been in hospital since a very long time and who want to stay at home now, and also for children with, which are immunocompromised, so um, they don't have to be in a group or in a hospital where they catch any infections. Um, yes, as said, we do that since 2009 and we have weaned over 800 children over the internet already. So if you want to talk about your personal story and if net coaching is a good choice for you, please feel free to book a free evaluation with Eva. Um, the next question is how to get rid of the feeding tube he never ate by mouth before. So nearly most of our children have never eaten anything before they have been weaned off the feeding tube due to their medical history. And um, as we are reducing the tube feeds and the and as a, from the calories and the volume, we allow children to become hungry. Yeah, and this is the only reason why a child is starting to eat. We are not starving children. So that's for me a big difference because our children are allowed to eat at any time as much as they want, one sip here, one sip there. At the end of the day, it is important how much um, of food is coming inside and not when. And um, they 
they start their their tube win like a newborn baby where they need to start to regulate themselves yeah at any time you have to let them the child the decision and the next um question is yeah it's good uh, here now how to make feel hungry to my child um the child gets only hungry if you reduce the tube feeds if you have a child which is not on a feeding tube and doesn't get hungry um, it might have sensory issues so this is very common for example and you need to look at the child in total to see how you need to go on with the treatment yeah and it is very important that you don't reduce tube feeds on your own because this can be a great health risk for your child um, so please always do that with specialized um, professionals um, in order to keep your child safe. With us, every wean is guided by a pediatrician, so we take care of, on the, of the original diagnosis of the child, of the age, of weight, height, and so on. So there is no recipe which accounts for all. It is a very individual thing, and we kindly ask you not to do this on your own, as it can be potentially dangerous. The next question, does following the treatment require taking time off work to do it? Will I have to cook meals in a special way? My daughter has an extreme rejection of food and anything that goes in the mouth. So if she spends too many days without showing signs of wanting to eat, how do you determine the safety to continue? Will we require to check her sugar levels? He can. How can we do her vitals are all fine if the treatment is done remotely? Do we need access to a hospital? So quite a lot of questions. Um, in a first step, families are going through the medical assessment where we our medical doctors see if um, blood checks will be necessary. It is depending on the medical diagnosis um, a child has. Yeah. In general, um, we do not need any blood checks, but really it depends on the on the medical history of the child. Um, you do not need to take time off from work um, because the wean is adapted to the way how you are living. So if the child is going to kindergarten, it can go to kindergarten. If you can go to work, um, the person who is looking after your child um, will be able to feed the child. Um, you will tell it to them. Um, no, you don't have to cook anything special. Um, it depends on the age of the child, what the child is eating. So, yeah, um, at a certain age, we just would like to have that the child is eating the food you are eating, probably first in a period form, of course. Um, during the wean, the children always receive enough via the tube to be medically safe and hydrated. Yeah, so they are, will not have um, days where they get nothing. Um, we are just cutting back the volume and the calories. But as I said, they are always safe and, and well hydrated. Um, you will get um, information how to behave in which situation. You can always give a flush. Um, of, of a tube feed if it is necessary that will be discussed with you. You need to fill in a daily intake protocol and a daily weight and that is the way how we can see that um, the child is in a good situation. We are asking for videos in a feeding situation. Um, we are asking you if, she, if the child is playful, how she is doing, whatever. Um, you do not need access to a hospital. Um, the um, the pediatrician or the, the, the medical doctor who is taking care of your daughter should know that you're weaning with us. That's, the, that's all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, another good question is how to know when to wean. Um, so we say as early as possible um, if the child is medically stable. So of course, a child needs to be medically stable enough to eat orally. But if a child is allowed to, then it should be weaned as soon as possible, because the longer the child stays on the feeding tube, the harder it gets to get rid of it. So for babies, it's most often easier than for three, four, five 
year olds to get rid of the tube because they've already become mentally tube dependent. And so this is a big part um, of their tube dependence. And um, so we recommend that you do the wean as early as medically possible. I'm very interested in hearing more information and about possible strategies as my 16 months old son has been fed by an NG tube all his life and I want to believe he can become a healthy oral eater. So in general, it depends on the medical diagnosis and the general developmental stage your child has. Yeah. Um, a healthy eater, um, yeah, that's okay at the end of the day, um, but we will not, we are not knowing, or I don't know at the moment if the child will will or can eat age appropriate, yeah, because this is depending on the, on the developmental stage. And weaning a child of a feeding tube, it is not important how old the child is, it's important what the child has a general developmental stage because the oral development is very tight connected to the general development. And the child which is weaned of a feeding tube needs to make the same oral um, steps as every other single child. So with some steps, they need a little bit longer. With some steps, they might be a little bit quicker. But if you have a three-year-one-old um, child, for example, who has to be weaned, they will for sure not be able to bite the chew after the wean. Yeah. So that must be clear. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, another question. How can you help families to don't be afraid when they're alone at home? This is a good question. Um, because of course we are not with you during the wean, at least not live. Um, but we are in very close contact with each other. As said, three professionals take care of your so-called ticket, where we uh, communicate um, on a daily basis. And with the, on a daily basis, we mean really uh, 365 days per year, so also on holidays and weekends. Um, as said, every ticket is followed by a psychologist. So if you have anxieties, fears, or anything, um, she is here for you and of course also the medical doctor um, who can assure you that your child is safe um, yeah and with this um, components the tube winning online works very well we have a success rate of over 90% so all of the children who have completed our program um, over 90% of them eat fully orally after the completion of the program how long does uh, no, sorry um, yeah how long does it usually take to be a fully independent eater if the child is less than one year old and has been ng tube fed for more than two months so in general the age of the child is not not, not that important um, but you can say the, the longer a child is on a feeding tube the more difficult it becomes as they are just tube dependent and the parents too usually a tube wind takes about two to three months some children are quicker some children need a longer time um, it depends on the developmental stage and the medical history of a child um, yeah that's it yeah then we got quite a lot of questions on the topic of oral aversion and tube feeding. Um, I have to say that at least, I guess, two thirds of all our patients have an oral aversion while they are tube fed. This is a very common side effect of uh, long term tube feeding and tube dependency. So, this is a normal um, situation for us that the child starts with a severe oral aversion. Um, in order to overcome this, it is it depends on many factors, but of course the reduction of the tube feeds is one of them. Um, in order to make the child feel hungry and not uh, feel nauseous and sick all day long from the tube feeds, so they can be they can try to enjoy some oral activities. And of course, our feeding therapists have very good tips and tricks for. 
um, getting over the tube dependency, getting over the oral aversion, um, see what the child wants to do. Sometimes it may, may get quite messy then, so you have to be prepared for that, but in general, it works very well. Um, I would also like to say something to the to the oral feeding aversion. And the, the next question is wean of tube with reflux and oral feeding aversion. So at the end of the day, a lot of children have a reflux as a symptom of um, a side effect of tube feeding, um, especially when they have an anti tube, when the stomach when the antitube is going down, the stomach is not closed totally, so it's much easier that it comes out. And when a child is fed by a feeding tube, um, the, the amounts of the tube feeding are calculated in a way like a mathematic example. Yeah, So they get every day the same amount, um, and this is just not a physiological way to eat because no child, no baby, no, no people in the world are eating every day the same amount to every meal. Yeah, and the children have no possibility to, to just say no. So it's just coming out. Yeah, as soon as you start to reduce the tube feeds, the reflex is going down because the volume is decreasing. And um, this terminus oral aversion is, um, is, is used a lot, especially in the English speaking countries. Um, and of course, a child on a child on a feeding tube doesn't have an oral aversion. A child on a feeding tube is just full, as Sabine said before, and has no interest in eating. Yeah. So, as soon as you are reducing the tube feeds, the child starts to feel better, and when the hunger is starting to kick in, the child starts to allow you to feed it. Okay. So next question, how important, are, no, so I'm sorry, but what are the factors that determine a successful tube wean success rates? Yeah, so a child uh, is for us fully tube weaned if it is 35 days after his or her very last tube feed, um, if, 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 he, if they are stable in weight. So 35 days after the last tube feed, when a child is in a stable weight um, position and um, in a good health status, then the mean is determined by us. Um, it is, determined, is, is completed. Um, success rates, as said, are in the 90s um, for our net coaching treatment. Over 90% of all children who complete the net coaching um, eat fully orally after the wean, as said which means that they eat orally 35 days after the very last tube feed in a good weight condition and good general condition. So from the children that cannot be weaned um, totally off the feeding tube, these are children, for example, which are very disabled and are not able to um, manage the whole amount they should eat orally. So these are children we can wean partially so that it's easier for the parents to feed them during the day and to give the rest in the night. Some children with metabolic diseases, you can't wean totally off the tube and some of the parents interrupt the program. Um, there is another question for the assessment. Does a UK professional need to consent? In general, for the assessment, um, no professional needs to consent. Um, for the treatment, of course, in, in some situations. So if you have a heart child, for example, um, the cardiologist needs to give the go that the wean can start. Or if you, if you have a child which has difficulties with the kidneys or sometimes like that, um, we need and want to have the consent um, of the medical team. Yeah. Um, another question about the children with DEF, uh, tracheoesophageal fistula. Um, he had this repaired, is four years old and has oral aversion. This is a very common situation we see. We have weaned a lot of children with uh, esophageal atresia and fistula. Um, we have also written a paper about our success rates with these kids, which are very high, fortunately. Um, so with four years, it's of course a bit 
the child is a bit older, so one can decide if one wants to do the net coaching or if one wants to come uh, to one of our eating schools, which are two-week on-site courses with a group of children and parents um, starting at the same date and ending at the same date. Um, but as said, this is a pretty common um, common problem we see in children that they have a TF or EA and an oral aversion. When do children lose the ability to swallow food if they are not doing so? Ask, asking to assess urgency given we would be going against doctor's advice to do the net coaching. So in general, either you can swallow or you can't swallow. It's the same like you are pregnant or you're not pregnant. Yeah, so there is no in between. Um, if a child is on a feeding tube and is able to swallow, um, they will be able to swallow all the time. Um, they are, because they're also swallowing their saliva. Yeah, so this does not have any kind of influence on it. Yeah, and here's a question about the patient with primary immune deficiency. And these are exactly the patients the net coaching was created for, but because these are children who shouldn't be in a large group with other people to the, their compromised immune system. Um, so these kids can stay at home during our net coaching program and get weaned um, or with our learn to eat program, which is our second telemedical program for children without feeding tubes, can stay at home in their familiar environment while you're coached by us on a daily basis. I don't think my kid is ready yet, but I'm interested in introduce in reducing tube feeds. Um, so I don't know what it means if my child is ready. I don't know what kind of of um, topics you use for that. So for us, it is as soon as there is no medical reason for a child to be on a feeding tube, it should be weaned. Yeah. Um, we have 80% of our children have never ever eaten anything before they started to wean, yeah, because they didn't have the chance and they have been too full. The soon you are reducing the tube feeds, you have to feed the child, yeah, because otherwise it's not working at all. Yeah, so another question is on the differences of between video treatment and in-person attendance. So I wouldn't call it video treatment because it's not only about videos, um, it's written communication, asynchronous. So you write down your um, daily report whenever you feel to do so. Um, we also have to keep in mind the time differences between us and maybe the US and Asia and so on. So the difference is basically we have two programs, the net coaching, which I have explained already for tube fed kids to learn to eat um, for kids without a feeding tube. And we have a third program for children, for adolescents, um, mostly with anorexia, which is called Weight Dog. And then we have our on-site program, uh, which is the eating school, which is a two weeks on-site course in Graz, Austria. Uh, where the children have intensive therapy and the parents have intensive therapy sessions every day from nine to six um, in our campus, um, which is followed by telemedical aftercare. So it's always the telemedical uh, part is always important in our treatment. Um, you can either do it only online or you do it in a combined way on site and online treatment. Uh, from the success rates, they are pretty similar. So there is no big difference between these two um, programs. So, of course, there are some children who we only recommend for eating school, some children who we only recommend for net coaching. This depends very much on the medical condition, the underlying medical condition of the child, the age. But all in all, um, these are the differences. Yeah. So now I have a, a very difficult question. My son is almost 12 years old. He has autism and he does not eat. I want to help him. Um, I think the biggest factor is um, 
how severe is the autism. And at the end of the, of the day, before you, you never will know if he's able to eat before you don't start the wean and look what is happening. Yeah, that's the only thing what, what, can, what you can do. And then you have to make the decision if it is a, if it's a good situation for him or not. Yeah. If you have struggles, if he has too much stress, um, but if you know how it would work, you need to start a wean. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. Um. My child who recently got off a feeding tube only eats from a syringe. Can you help with eating by spoon bottle straw? Yes, of course. We can uh, help you with the transition from syringe to bottle or to straw or to um, spoon. We can help you to get rid of um, only um, bottle feeding to further textures. Um, we also have a lot of children who um drink breast milk for a very very long time three to four years and don't accept anything else so they also come to us to get wind of that um so we are we have a lot of experience with these transitions um so these are the kids without feeding tubes which come to us and we will be happy to answer your uh specific questions in a free evaluation I'm struggling with three preschoolers who are tube fed and are orally aversive. Two will take limited taste, but I worry about the actual swallowing of the trace amounts, although no, no one have or had indications of aspiration. Are there some pre-feeding rituals you do or perhaps you do on the continuum or each session that you find beneficial? That's the question of a, of a professional. So to this question, I have to say that we have a totally different approach. Yeah, um, I personally, or we believe that um, a child is born with the possibilities it has. Yeah, and it has to deal with these possibilities, and from there they can develop their own skills. If you have a child with cerebral palsy, for example, you can exercise until you get old. They will never ever have a normal oral motor function. Yeah. So for me, the goal is to, to find the easiest way um, that the child is able to eat with the possibilities it has. And it is, and this is something where you need to look at what is the child able to do. And then you know what is the next developmental step. But we are not exercising before. We are not exercising at all. We are feeding children and help them to swallow the food and start to eat. Yeah, exactly. Um, just looking for the next question. Um, how to increase the quantity of our eating to my child who is partially tube fed? Well, for this, you mostly need um, professional help because partial tube feeds are mostly too much to really take more and too little to gain weight. And so um, it is important to um, participate in a professionally guided wean in order to help your child uh, get off all tube feeds. Yeah. Um. That's again, I think that the difference between the US, for example, and, and our approach, because as far as I know, there are, a child needs to eat a certain amount, then the tube feeds are cut back and we are doing it in the other way around. We are cutting back the tube feeds, allowing the child to become hungry, that it has a reason to start to eat. So there is a question, my child who recently got off a feeding tube, but only eats from a syringe. Can you help with eating by spoon, bottle or straw? Um, yes, in general, we can help. It depends on the general motor development of the child, if the child is ready for it. Um, and 
what would be the best um, solution. So eating or feeding with a syringe and a finger feeder is quite a, a good start because you can make a mount, yeah? And then you can develop the next step. Yeah, we are happy to help you at the eating school, of course. Um, here's the next question. Our child is extremely fussy eater and has eating tube a feeding tube, I guess, for water flushes as he is also not drinking enough water. He was born 13 months too early and was on oxygen therapy for 3.5 years. He is now almost six years old. Which setting for therapy is the most effective for fussy eaters? Is it a home setting or an eating school? Well, so to be honest, with picky eaters or fussy eaters, the best treatment is in the eating school. Um, this is not so easy online. So the children need the group, the children need um, a hands-on approach. So with fussy, picky eaters, selective eaters, we always recommend to come to the eating school. Um, my son has a feeding tube. He will be having the operation by next month. He eats by mouth, but he's not gaining weight. So this will help him gaining weight. He's been getting sick often because his body always on attack mode. I would like to know if there is some therapy I can do for him to be able to eat more solid foods with being same. Thank you. Um, as far as I understand, um, your son is normally eating orally, but now as he is having an operation, he got a feeding tube um, to increase his weight. Um, so... And you want to know if how to make him eat solids to gain more weight on his own. I don't know if I understood it right. So in general, you need to look at the at the at the growth chart of a ch of a child. You need to look at the at the birth weight. You need to look how the child developed. Um, and eating solids. Um, doesn't help them with gaining weight. Yeah, if you, these are for me, these are two different goals. If you want to gain weight, um, you take the pyrus and increase um, the calories. You probably need to feed him in all day long. Yeah, um, like a snacker and not with three meal times and two um, snacks. Um, you're not, you should not give him any kind of, of food with just zero calories. It's like water numbers like that, um, but should look that you enrich it in a in a good form. And having solids and starting to bite and chew is something different, where you don't get in that much calories. But I think I didn't understand the question probably right. So feel free to book another free relation with me, and I'm happy to discuss it with you. Yeah. Uh, next question is on this feature with aspiration on thin liquids only. Can my child start a weaning program with you or does he have to be cleared for swallowing 100% on all consistencies? He can swallow thickened consistencies safely. So yes, if a child is able to swallow thickened fluids, uh, it is possible to participate in our program. So it is not necessary to um, be able to um, be cleaned for thin liquids. Um, because we can get the liquid also thickened. So feel free to um, do a free relation with Eva in order to check um, how we can help your child. Our child is extreme is an extremely fussy eater and has been tube fed for water flushes as he is. I did that also... already. I did this one already, Eva. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, my three... Uh, point five years old son is a big eater. I would like to learn strategies to make him eat more varied, a more var varied diet. Um, yeah, it depends on what kind of picky eater your son is and how his general development is. Um, if it's if you if you think about um, a, a variety of textures, if you're thinking about a variety of um, food um, yeah learning strategies um, how to make him eat more varieties is a thing where you can we can work with you brilliant in our eating school 
um, because it needs a lot of sensory work and a lot of education for you as parent. Yes, and this also counts for the next quid questions. How can the kid eat more types of food? Our kid is quite picky. Or we also have questions on to how to progress onto different text, textures and hard soft veggies and things seem to be stuck on puree. So these are all uh, questions for eating school treatment um, because we have to define what is the reason for the pickiness. So is it sensory issues? Is it intellectual problem? Um, or is it a combination of many things? Um, and then of course, one has to take care of the developmental stage of the child. So a child which is not able to sit in an upright position can't uh, chew. So this is simply not possible. So we have to assess a lot of things in order to find out how to help your child best. Um, what is the frequency of treatment? Is the treatment plan carried out to be continued at home? What strategies for a mother who does not follow the guidelines to be followed at home? Um, the frequency of the treatment for the telemedical programs, we are in daily written contact with you. Yeah. And then we guide you every single day um, what to do, how much you should um, give via tube fit, things like that. So we don't give you a plan where we say um, in the first five days you have to reduce 5% and then you have to reduce 25% whatever in the next 10 days because this is not working so our weans are tailored to the special child and um, that's why the daily contact is just important um, carried out to be continued at home I think that is an indicator that you are talking about the eating school um, when you're leaving the eating school we are in again in daily written contact with you um, depending on the treatment you had, on the one hand, 60 days, and on the other hand, 35 days until the last tube feed by stable weight. Um, what strategies for a mother who doesn't follow the guidelines to be followed at home? Um, to be honest, there are no strategies because if she doesn't follow the guidelines, she doesn't follow them. Yeah, Then it might become difficult, but I think... Um, what we have learned in the past is that parents who are starting to win with us um, were coming to the eating school, which is a which is a lot of effort. Yeah, um, they are most of the times going on. Yeah. Yeah. So, how to address vomiting with nasal tube feeding? Um, vomiting is a big issue in tube fed children. Um, more than 50% of all children who start to wean with us vomit on a regular basis. This is mostly completely related to the tube feeds and stops immediately as soon as the child eats orally. That's also the reason why many kids, uh, a third of all tube fed kids are malnourished despite they get the whole uh, integrated tube, but they uh, simply don't tolerate it and vomit a lot. We had children who vomit up to 40, 50 times a day. So this is a big, big obstacle for families um, with tube for children. And um, has, this has also a great influence on the social life of the whole family because you can't go out with a child. You have to feed all day long and then it vomits again and so on. So vomiting on tube feeds is a pretty common uh, side effect of the tube dependency. And in almost all cases, it uh, disappears when the child is tube weaned. How can I get my child to eat more? She eats, but not enough calories. She can, eas she can, she very easily is distracted when eating, but will try anything. Um, in general, if a child is very distracted, um, it's not the eating which is a problem, it's the short period of attention time. So this is a sensory issue and should be here we should focus on and look how she, what kind of support she needs to um, have a longer um, attention period. Um, the other thing is that 
it's not about more it's probably about to enrich the food more yeah so that you have more calories in smaller portions more often um that's the way i would look at okay uh here a question from a family we have a six month old with nasogastric tube who doesn't latch suck or want anything near mouths he has bad reflux and recently had surgery for laryngomalacia um yeah one has to keep in mind that if children doesn't don't use their primary sucking reflex it mostly gets lost so it's not easy to get kids after a month of complete tube feeding back to the normal bottle or breast. Um, but fortunately, we have a lot of uh, devices already for these children, so they don't need to suckle, which is a primary sucking reflex. Um, so they can drink from other devices. The reflux, as said, is a very common problem in all tube fed children. And of course, it hurts a lot. So children associate everything which is in their oral region with pain and uh, I'm uncom feeling uncomfortable. So uh, tube weaning is necessary in these cases in order to help the children feel, uh, uh, get positive feelings around any oral um, activities. How to progress them onto different textures and hard, soft wedges and things seem to be stuck on puree. So um, this sounds like a sensory issue. Um, some children just have difficulties um, to make this next step. So it means that you have to work on, on the sensory. Um, probably they are not aware of um, what they are uh, and before coming to chewing and biting, um, the child should be able to eat also purees a little bit on its own and a little, and should take um, the, the textured food with her hands and put it in the mouth. Yeah. So some might have to work on the steps before to get to the next bigger step. Yeah. Then we have my one-year-old TFEA baby could be helped with weaning tube online. Yes. Um, as said, um, we had a lot of children with esophageal atresia or tracheal esophageal fistula um, with very good success rates. Um, and mostly it works also very well online. So feel free to um, book a free evaluation with us in order to discuss your specific um, case with Eva and then do the medical assessment and then we can tell you uh, for 100% if your child is suitable for our treatment. But as said, uh, children with these conditions um, we see very, very often. So the next question is very similar to the question before. My child got his tube removed almost two years ago but still pocketing lots of food. He's improving, but I was hoping after such a long time, it's done. What could be the reason? What can I do? Everyone tells me it just takes time, but I don't want to miss anything in case it is more. So in general, um, if he's still pocketing after two years, it's an, it's an sensory issue. And some children need to pocket to feel the pressure and then they are aware that there is something in the mouth. Yeah. So some children have the food in all day long. Yeah. Because they are not, they just forget about it. Yeah. Um, that's a sensory issue and one can work on it. So if you would like to know more, just contact us and I'm happy to talk to you. Okay. Um... Recommendations on tube winning for a 10 month old, medically clear to eat orally, but very little. No matter how hungry he is, rejects bottle also. Only thing she really loves is unflavored Pedialyte. Seems to be sensitive to flavors, can get her to drink some chocolate with your sure from a cup, but not much. Less than three ounces at very best, less than half an ounce at worst. I would say this is already pretty a lot for a fully tube fed child because many children don't even allow food near their mouth and this child is already able to swallow something and even drink a bit so this is a very good precondition for a uh, supervised tube weaning 
um, and we would be help, happy to help you. What makes my child to be attracted to solid food? Um, the general developmental stage of a child, the possibilities, um, the sensory issues. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Then I got a question. Are there any machines for real meals versus formula? I don't understand the questions. The question, which machines do you mean? Um, generally on the um, question, if you, you fit real meals or formula, that is a very individual question. So one cannot say this, this one is completely better than the other thing. Of course, the formula contains everything a child needs, but some children don't tolerate it very well. So um, we see both children, children who, have, who got fed with normal blended food and children who get specific tube formulas. Yeah, so this is very individual. Our son was born prematurely at 24 weeks. He was born on August the 11th, 2019. He is tube fed since January 2021. He is three years and a half old, weighs 14.6 Kilos measures 104 centimeters. Our son has recently been diagnosed with autism. We will be moving from Chile to Switzerland in April 2023, 20, and we want to teach him to eat by mouth. Our son has been with feeding therapy here in Chile since February 2021, three times a week, but with no results. Mm -hmm. He won't eat by mouth. We are interested in attending the eating school in July since we will be living close by. We think doing the best, doing the face to face program might be the best option. Would this be your recommend, recommendation? Yes, of course. I think it's very important to work with him personally and also to educate you how you can start to feed him. We are looking forward to meet you soon. Yeah, then we have a um, question from the Q&A session. Um, if a child has an uncoordinated swallow but no aspiration confirmed, can they be successful at tube weaning? Um, yes, of course. So it very much depends how severe the, the um, uncoordination is. If the child is just not trained to coordinate because it hasn't been able to, because it has and you fed, and of course one can start um, gently to try to introduce um, oral feeding, but it always has to be under the supervision of a medical professional, because um, yeah, you have to do video analysis and and um, so on in order to see if the child is swallowing well. But generally, it is possible. Um, we always do the, as Eva said, a medical assessment of each child before every um, single program starts. So if you are interested in our programs, you register your child and then you fill in the medical assessment, which consists of three videos of the child eating, drinking and playing, of medical records and of a specific questionnaire. And then we evaluate everything and tell you if a child is suitable for our um, our programs or not, or if you need any additional information or any examinations. And after the assessment, you can download the document for the insurance. And it depends in general on your personal health care provider if they are covering the program or not. But <clears throat> we have um, from a lot of, of families, um, abroad we have information how they got it covered a lot of families are doing fundraising and um, so it's working quite well um, the next question was diagnosis failure to try 15 months on inchy tube for the last seven months full-term baby knows how to swallow but refuses to eat very little intake by mouth doesn't so show signs of hunger how to wean her off the tube and teach her how to eat. So I think here you have to look at the general developmental stage um, because 
having her on a feeding tube now um, was a short time solution, to be honest, um, because there, there needs to be a reason why she didn't eat before enough. <clears throat> and she's not showing any kinds of hunger. Um, I'm pretty sure that she has sensory issues. And yeah, that's where you have to look and also to work with. Um, and probably you just write me an email or book a free relation so that we can talk about it, how it could look like. Um, yeah, so next question. My child has been on the feeding tube since birth. She's five years old and has gone through three unsuccessful tube wins. Although she eats snacks or small bites of food, she never seems to get beyond this point of only eating small portions. Would she be able to qualify for weaning with no tube? Yes, this very much sounds like she is a good candidate for our program. We have many children who unfortunately underwent weaning attempts before, which were not successful. So almost all children who come to us have already undergone a, a, a certain program for tube weaning or a wean um, guided by the pediatrician or a speech and language pathologist who have not been successful. Um, yeah, our approach is maybe a bit different to what you have seen before, but feel free to talk to Eva about this, about your specific um, situation and she will guide you and tell you um, how we can help your child. But I'm pretty sure we can. Um, the next question is how to teach my child how to chew. He is used to eat purees and swallows right away. So when we give textured food, he gags. Um, that's a sensory issue and needs professional support. Um, yeah. So we are happy to help you. Yeah. Um, there's a question from a professional. Um, what would your advice be with regard to supporting parents at home when you only see them every three months in the clinic? Well, I would say it's almost impossible. As said, our programs are, we are in daily contact with the patients, even on weekends and on holidays. And this is so important for parents who have a child with uh, a feeding problem. So it's almost impossible to really do a wean when you see the child only every third month. So I think that's pretty, so this support is, is too little. So recently discharged from the hospital with NG tube, how can I start to wean from the tube when we are at, we, when we were eating and drinking from the bottle, um, we had no anti tube before this, the hospital stay. Sure. Um, I think this is just, a, we're happy to help you to win your daughter of the feeding tube, of course. And sorry to hear that it went in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does insurance cover telehealth tube weaning? Uh, Eva answered that one already a bit. Um, basically, yes. Um, insurance is to cover the telemedical tube weaning, um, but it's always a, a single decision. So you have, so if you do the assessment and uh, your child is um, uh, eligible for treatment, you can download um, all the documents for the insurance and hand it in to them and then wait for their decision. Sometimes they refuse for the first time and then after a uh, appeal, you get the funding. So it very much depends. As we treat children from all over the world, I cannot give you a, an, an answer which fits for all because they all have different um, um, health systems in their countries, but generally it is possible. How can I find out if my daughter is able to swallow? She does lick food, but always pushes food out of her mouth. Is this an intention that she might not be able to swallow? She's two years old and tube fed from birth. At this stage, there is no obvious reason why she should not eat but she might not eat because she just does not know how maybe so 
in the first step, it would be interesting why your daughter was on a feeding tube from beginning. And um, the second question is, does she swallow her saliva? Um, and the third question is, um, do you have any kind of speech and language therapists or whatever? Are you allowed to feed your child? Um, yeah, so probably you make a free relation and um, I'm happy to look a little bit more into that. Great. I think we are almost at the end of our uh, session today. Um, uh, let me summarize for you that if we haven't been able to answer your question during this live session, please feel free to contact us uh, and book a free evaluation to Dr. Eva or write us an email uh, to help at notube.com um, in order to get an answer from one of our professionals. Um, we would be very happy if you get in contact with us. Um, it was a very interesting Q&A for us, I think, with many good questions. I hope we have answered them uh, profoundly for you. And yeah, Eva. Um, there is a last question. Will there be a video from the session available somewhere? Can I receive a record from the session? Um, Yes, uh, you can on the one hand, you can see it on our YouTube channel. On the other hand, you can see it on our website tomorrow. And the third option is that you receive an email um, if you are registered at YouTube. So thank you for the lovely time with you. Unfortunately, we didn't, we haven't been able to answer all your questions, but please feel free to write us an email or book a free relation as Sabine said, and have a nice day. Yeah. Goodbye.